Okay, so when we, after we're done uh, getting the basics, we get done saddling, we get done with the driving, and we get our first two, three rides, okay? Um, the first two, three rides, all you're doing is getting your horse to move. It don't matter where it moves. It doesn't matter how it moves. You just want your horse to know it can move, your first few rides. So after you get past that, and again, there's no real science to those first few rides. You, you get on, you ask your horse to move. If they go left, that's great. If they go right, that's great, okay? So after you get past that and your horse is feeling relatively comfortable with you on their back, you can just come out to the pen, get on their back, and you're not really worried about, uh, you know, them being scared of the, you know, the first few rides. Once you get to that point, you're going to, what you want to do is make sure you've got your three speeds uh, accomplished. It's one of the first things you want to do. Uh, and then as well as you're going to start working on that stop. Okay, so obviously your first few rides, your, your walk is going to be there. So as long as they walk around without you having to really encourage it, and then you want to move to that jog, okay? And you want to try your hardest to not be restrictive. Don't hold on to their face, okay? So get them jogging. Once they start jogging around and moving free at the jog where you're not in their face much, and they're just freely moving at a nice, uh, a nice pace, then you want to go to the lope, okay? You want to make sure you're comfortable and just ask your horse to lope off. And just keep asking until they give it to you. Okay? You're not wanting that perfect lope off right at the beginning. You're just wanting them to lope off whenever they can get to it. Okay? We don't want to scare them into it. We don't want to beat them into it. We're just asking that horse to move to the next speed. Okay, you want to make sure you do this going both directions. And then just slow down, go to that jog, go to that walk. Okay, make sure you can turn them relatively well. I accomplish most of this before I leave the round pin, okay? And then as well, I want to be able to make sure I can stop them at the walk and at the jog. I'm not really worried about stopping at the lope uh, in the round pin. We'll work on that in later sessions. So I want to make sure, obviously, again, we can stop them at that walk. And then we can ride them up here and stop them at the jog. Cool. Okay, and that's all we're looking for in our first several sessions is making sure that they feel that they freely can move at all, at all three speeds and that they can stop relatively well at the walk and at the jog. Okay, so after we get the three speeds done and we're relatively stopping well and, and, and getting the basics of turning, and then I'm gonna start asking them to turn on the fence and this is going to begin to teach them how to use their front end and how to start crossing over. I really start that as early as I can possibly get away with. Uh, I think the importance of teaching your horse to move their front end and, and use their hind end well, if you can begin to teach that at the, at the fundamental early stages of training, not making it mandatory that they do it really well or fast, but that they're getting the basics. Uh, I think is really uh, a, an essential part of the development of these um, two and three year olds. So <clears throat> I will start them, again this is after we've got down all the speeds and relatively have a decent stop, I'm going to ask them to stop on the fence here and I'm just going to turn their head into it and ask them to cross that front end and I'm going to use the legs, okay? We we'll just do it real slow and real easy, okay? So I'm going to use my outs, my the rein that's in inside here. I'm going to hold that firm and I'm going to tilt her head so she moves them shoulders, okay?
okay, that inside rein, when I pick it up, what that does is it helps from that shoulder just kind of falling off. It helps keep that shoulder picked up and um, moving through. If you don't do that, if you just kind of pull their head and come through, what happens is the hip will fall away and they'll actually just move their hip and then walk out with their front end. And that's not what we want. We want their hip to stay <clears throat> relatively uh, straight and then to move their front end just like that, okay? When I get that down at a, at a pretty good at the walk, then I'll move to the jog, okay? And the reason we go to the jog is it just adds that extra little bit of motion and a little bit of speed kind of helps them do this just a little bit faster, okay? So we'll jog around here. We'll ask for a simple little stop, oh, and then come through, okay? And then jog out of it. Stop, oh, come through. Right there, she didn't come through as nice, but that's okay. We'll, we'll work on it as we go. I'm not, at this early stage, I'm not mandatory that they do it perfect or, you know, we're just getting them to understand the basics. Okay, once they get that, where they're turning fairly decent out onto the fence and understanding how to cross over, I'll bring him in here and I'll just ask him to do the same thing at a standstill. Ask him to step over and then walk off. Stop, ask him to step over and then walk off. And I do this again as early as I can possibly get away with so that my horses learn from the very beginning that I don't want round, big turns. I want crisp, tight turns. And again, I, I, I emphasize that mainly because we're, do, we're riding performance horses and it's important that they learn to use their body very crisply and clean. And so that's why I try to teach them as early as I can uh, to make, make those shoulders move uh, <clears throat> free and easy. As we progress in our training, we have several different things that we're looking at. And one of our key elements of, of training is backing your horse. I work on backing as a session, but they're typically very short um, and they're inter it's intermingled with my turning, with my stopping, with, with all of my different speed variances, I intermingle the backing in there. I don't necessarily work on backing by itself until they're uh, quite a bit farther along in their training. So, so how that'll basically look is as I'm walking around, okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm working and maybe we're working on turning on the, the quarter here, and we get a good little step, Maybe I'll walk forward, okay, and I'll stop. So we just worked on stopping there, we just worked on turning, and then we'll just pick up and we'll ask the back, okay, and then I'll turn off. So right there, again, we worked on, right there in those, just those few maneuvers, we, we worked on a stop, we worked on turn on, the, uh, turn on the forehand both directions, and we worked on the back. Okay, and that's how I integrate all of this together. I don't just come out and back my horse and back my horse and back my horse. I do back her a lot, I do back them a lot, but I back them uh, intermixed with the rest of my training. I don't just do it as a session by itself, okay? When you're doing it in the round pin, understand horses are very aware of where they're at and so make sure you're, you know, into your pin aways and back up. Don't, don't try to, especially these young horses, don't back them into the fence. It will cause them not to want to back freely. You know, get up to where they know they have enough room to back up. And just be real patient, quiet, and let them, let them understand a few, you know, a step or two is good. And then just increase as you go. But try to be real quiet and patient in that backup. If you can get a really decent, good backup on your horse, You'll, you'll develop a better stop, you'll develop uh, better maneuvers all the way around. So, uh, and, they'll, and they'll begin to be softer and learn to really round that back up. So that's a very important part of, uh, of, of the beginning stages as well, is that back up. <clears throat>